Hi, welcome to a brand new season of Snowmobiler Television. On this show, we're going to deep dive into the biggest news to hit the snowmobile industry in a long time. So don't go anywhere because the 2024 riding season starts right now. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. 509, fueling your passion. And by Polaris, think outside. It was this past summer that the snowmobile world was rocked by the news that Yamaha was going to cease production of snowmobiles after the 2025 model year. Now, some people out there said that they could see this coming a mile away and that it was so obvious even the Simpsons could have predicted it. But that's the problem with predictions. If you make enough of them, one or two are bound to come true, both good and bad. Well, this news was definitely bad and unexpected despite those predictions, and I was there for it, so let me set the scene. It was mid-June or so, and Yamaha had gathered all of the snowmobile media together for a video conference. And we thought this was pretty strange to have the wintertime media gathering together in the middle of the summer, so we were expecting something big. I was hoping we were going to hear about the successful pairing of a Yamaha Genesis engine into the new Cat Catalyst chassis and that it was going to be available as a limited build production for 24 and a full model for 2025. At least that's what I was hoping for and we all know now that wasn't the case at all. In fact, it was about as opposite as you could get from what I was thinking. There was stunned silence on the line after the announcement was made and personally, I felt as if one of my four favorite dogs had just been shot and killed to death. It's been a minute since the news went far and wide back on June 28th and I've done a lot of thinking about and talking about this decision. Now I remain disappointed that one of the four manufacturers building snowmobiles for this industry that I love is going the way of the dodo, but I understand it and have accepted it. Now I wasn't there in 1968 when the first Yamaha snowmobile, the SL350, hit the snow, but I sure do feel a privilege to be here at the end after such a tremendous run that Yamaha has had in the industry. Now it doesn't matter if you're a Yamaha fan or not, there is absolutely no denying the driving force and the influence that Yamaha has had developing the snowmobile lifestyle that we know today. For me, my Yamaha experience started when I desperately wanted a Yamaha Phaser back when I was a kid, but that never happened. Instead, my Yamaha story really starts in my late teens when I was just getting involved in the snowmobile media world, hanging around with guys like John Massingbird and riding those old pogo stick VMAXs and XTs that, if I remember correctly, had just a touch of inside ski lift. Now those machines soon evolved into the trailing arm SX sleds in 1997 with Yamaha's first triple cylinder 700. These machines were much better handling than the previous generation sleds and they set a standard for which all others were judged and I was there for that. I wasn't around for the original SRXs when they hit the snow but I sure was around in 98 when they were coming back and there's no denying that that 700 engine whether it was triple pipe or single, was the sound of a legend. I mean, just close your eyes and you can hear it coming across the lake. Then I was also around in 03 for the very first RX-1 when that two-stroke sound changed to four. At the time, Yamaha was the first to bring a performance four-stroke to market, and even though the rear suspension left a little bit to be desired, those sleds soon evolved into the Apex possibly the most refined four-cylinder, four-stroke sled ever, still beloved by both past and current owners. Then there were sleds like the Nitro, which capitalized on the popularity of Snowcross, bringing Yamaha's bespoke race sleds to the public. And of course, the venerable Vectors that were possibly one of the best, most comfortable all-around snowmobiles ever built. 
Then in 2014, Yamaha put together a supply agreement with Articat that put Yamaha Motors in CAT chassis, which began the next chapter for Yamaha and set the stage for a lineup with the most powerful engines ever in a stock snowmobile. Now, some people felt that this was the beginning of the end for Yamaha, but I disagree. This partnership, if anything, kept Yamaha in the game and kept pushing their industry competitors forward with ever more powerful sleds as they literally tried to keep up. I was there for all of that and I'm super thankful for that opportunity. I did miss out on some of the early days though, back when sleds like the Enticer, the SRV and the original SRXs were on the snow. Maybe you have those memories and if you do, that is truly amazing. And even though production will end after 2025, that's not gonna be the end for the enthusiasm for Yamaha snowmobiles because these sleds are gonna be on the snow for a long time to come. And I'm glad I'm gonna be there for that too. Coming up after the break, I hit the road to meet up some Yamaha riders and maybe even a legend or two. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. That was a leisurely 830 kilometer jaunt south from the cold and snow to here in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, where we're at FNS Yamaha and Marine for their fall open house. And looks like a beautiful day to spend at the dealership talking sleds. We were invited down by our good friend Steve Duffy from Yamaha Motors, who you might remember from last season when I rode gold member to and from the Bonnachere Cup Ice Oval races last winter to hang out with him and his friends at FNS for the weekend. The guys here at FNS are telling me that their dealership is the furthest one south in North America that sells snowmobiles. And judging by the turnout and the enthusiasm that I'm seeing here today, I can understand why they've been successful. Every year they have a open house that's very well attended. Not only do they have all of their customers coming in looking for a deal, they have a huge display of vintage snowmobiles. An added bonus for this year, Tim Bender, synonymous with Yamaha Racing for many, many years, will be on site. With having Tim here it would only add to the Yamaha theme. You know, we are getting out of the snowmobile business and we have a lot of passionate customers, but why not have Snowmiller TV come down here, not only see all of Bob's great collection, meet some of his very longtime customers, but have Tim here to get his thoughts on Yamaha and his involvement with them over many, many years and to talk about snowmobiles. Tim Bender, a legend in the snowmobile performance and racing world, made the trip to FNS. Plus, Robbie Wolf, a local collector, brought out some excellent examples of Tim's performance sleds that he built back in the 90s. It's not often that something like this happens, and getting the chance to speak with Tim was very special. Does it bring back any memories seeing these old sleds that you, uh, you've worked on in the past? Oh, for sure. There's lots of memories, good ones and bad ones. <laughs> and with the sleds that are here, is there a favorite sled that you like amongst the group? Yeah, the one you're sitting on right there, like the Avalanche. Um, it's a three-cylinder. We built it. They took a two-cylinder and cut it in half of a cylinder off. And cut the other half of the other one off and welded the two together and made a three-cylinder out of it. So it's 854 cc. And uh, it was a heck of a trail sled, 160 horsepower. What were some of your fonder memories from, you know, back in the day? Did you enjoy racing? Uh, did you enjoy maybe the development of sleds like the Avalanche and things like that? What was sort of your, your, your fondest memories from, from your career as a, a snowmobile engineer and racer? Well, mainly I was, had been racing and, and sold Yamaha performance parts for, to keep racing so I could fund my race effort. But uh, when Yamaha came on board as a uh, former specialist, it put another feather in our cap as far as Yamaha goes. 
Now, are you still working on sleds a little bit? Uh, what's what's a kind of a current day today? Do you still think about snowmobiles all the time? I think about snowmobiles all the time, yeah. But I, I probably every other day I do something with a snowmobile. Well, this looks familiar. I mean, this is this is exactly like mine. Well, I mean, it's a little cleaner. There's there's no rust on the trailing arms though, so that's not like mine. What's oh, track look like? Well, this track looks much better. Yeah, I mean, way cleaner than mine. Actually, think about it. This is nothing like mine. Mine is an absolute piece of crap compared to this thing. Oh well, I own mine. It doesn't run but I own it. When the Yamaha decided to, to pull the plug, it was, it upset us because we're passionate about it. Um, financially, we're gonna be fine though because our boat business is, is the size that it is. Um, but, and we'll continue to uh, service Yamahas uh, and support our customer base because we sell uh, a lot of new Yamahas with five-year warranties. So uh, we've got some, uh, five years is quite a ways down the road. So we're gonna continue to help those customers and, and the customers even beyond that as well. As long as we can help them, we will, yeah, we will be there. So yeah, it, it definitely, especially my dad. My dad has been doing this for, for uh, longer than me and is the current owner of FNS, and s uh, And he's, he's even more passionate about it than I am. So that, yeah, that, that, uh, that definitely hurt. The ringleader of this event is Bob Sell, the S in F and S, and his infectious enthusiasm for snowmobiles is greater than most. The F and S Yamaha and Marine was started in 1987 out of passion for pretty much Yamaha snowmobiles. Uh, myself and another gentleman started it. We added boats to it in uh, late 80s. So it's been doing very well ever since. Of course, we're sad about the Yamaha leaving the industry, but we've grown our business to other levels. So we have a annual open house festivities, snowmobile oriented. We always have an annual vintage show, and this has been probably going on for 25 plus years. I have uh, a few Johnson Evinrudes. I'm a, a Johnson Evinrude fan. My father sold those when I was a boy. That introduced me to snowmobiling. And I have uh, my 73 SR433 here, which I built and was fortunate enough to race at Eagle River. Vintage, 2001, 2003, and 2005. And I won in 03, 440 free air mod, very passionate here, us drag racers from the east, never went around a round. I have a few other sleds in my collection and uh, I'm hoping that we can go, like maybe we ought to go right now, I'm busy here, so let, let's get going right now. We're going. This segment is brought to you by Polaris. All right, Bob, this is the legendary barn that we've been hearing about. And I mean, we just stepped in the door and you have two amazing snowmobiles. Talk to me about these guys. Okay, we have a 69 SL351. Now this was the first full year production sled that Yamaha offered to the public. Yeah, 68 was the first 68, year. 68, they brought in a handful and, and I think it was 150 units, maybe something like that. And yeah. distributed them across Canada and US to key dealers to get feedback. Yeah. So the 69 was the first year full, full production. production. And yeah. this is an original survivor. And the 292 over here, that thing looks spectacular. That must have been restored. Yes, that's that. restored with the exception of the, I think the seat's original. But what makes this sled unique is this is a GP 292 72 model. So the GP was kind of a performance trail sled. Yeah. And then Yamaha, which they were fan-cooled sleds out of the box. 
they offered this get kit, which turned it into a free air, mm -hmm. which was a different cylinder head, bigger bore carburetor, and different piston and cylinder porting. Yeah. Would then it, the second kit was the open pipe. I was just going to say, that does not look like a stock pipe. So that was kit number two. Yeah. And I have never seen, uh, until I bought this sled, I never saw single cylinder get kits. Yeah. <laughs> now, I hear you've got some other race sleds, like sort of in the next yeah, room. Yes, so we're going to go to the next room, and I'm going to show you some other unique Yamaha product. Perfect. Exactly. Let's go that way, Let's then. Let's go. I'll follow you. Very good. Hey, come on in. Watch your step. A lot of goodies in here. Jeez, there's, I have questions. So the first sled is a unique sled. This is a 71 600 Magnum. Now I acquired this and didn't realize the rarity of it till years later. They've mm -hmm. only made 50 of these. They had weak engines and didn't survive. Yeah. So this one I got from an OMC engineer who had it. OMC of the day bought a bunch of sleds. Employees would take them home however they got them home. Yeah. And uh, that's how we got this thing. Next sled is a 77 uh, SRX, which was the second year for Yamaha SRXs. And these were primarily only sold to racers. They didn't yeah. build a lot of these. The 76s they made a lot of. These made more horsepower than the 76s. They had a sway bar, a unique sway bar on the back end uh, for cornering. And this sled is pretty much original. It's a replacement hood, but I do have the original hood. But it's pretty much unrestored. Uh, and this one is desirable because it has the stock pipes, stock air box, stock carburetor, stock fuel pumps. Because most of these things have been performatized, cannibalized, yeah, or, or it's whatever. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the 77s are kind of desirable. Yeah. So. Well, there's a few desirable things. And <laughs> like an SSR, I mean, that's another unique one. You don't see those every so day. So that was a 78 SSR, which was Yamaha's entry into independent front suspensions. But one unique thing with this sled is serial number one. Is that one? This one. Wow. Consumer sleds with Yamaha always start with 100. Yeah. So 101 is a consumer. Mm -hmm. This is 101. So this has an original seat. It has original pipes, original carbs, Yamaha original clutches, yeah. original shocks, because there again, this stuff was hot rotted. They had improved clutching. People came up with improved carburation, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, as racers do. Exactly. Now the GPX next to it here. Now that is a restored unit. Yeah, that, I was going to say, that doesn't look like in as new condition. And I have a soft spot for GPXs. And this has two get kits on it. We're back to that Yamaha Performance yeah. get kit. From the factory. From the factory. The first kit was Circle M fuel injection, mm -hmm. different cylinders, different pistons. And then the next kit was open pipes. So this has both those get kits on. Yeah. So you're just in the right place at the right time for a lot of this a lot stuff. Of, and that's yeah. what a lot of collecting is. Yeah. Yes. And it looks like you're into motorboating too. You got like one or two or like 70. I have a nice collection of outboards, some unique, some not unique, but. And this, like, you don't see this every day. Very, There's a lot of stuff you don't see in here every day, but you don't really don't see this Very every day. unique sled. We were going to be a dealer, and I got one. Of course, I cherish this one that yeah. we got. Yeah, because how many are, like, together? There were uh, supposedly 13 ships that didn't have seats or exhausts on them. Mm -hmm. And they made 53 of these sleds, and bankruptcy hit, yeah. and they were done. This part of the garage, I mean, wow, you've got a VMAX 4 up here. <laughs> First year and and that looks pristine as well. First year survivor. VMAX 4 survivor. survivor. Yeah, because it has quite a bit of mileage on it. Yeah. Uh, and it's good. And I also have in another uh, storage facility a 97 VMAX 4, which is last year. Yeah. So I have a first year. Last you year. got them step four deep here. Is that a Boat Tail Grand Prix? That's a Grand Prix. Boat Tail <laughs> Grand Prix. And they were made, I think, three years. They were very expensive. Well, they weren't for everybody. They were not. <laughs> 
dollar wise or performance. And wise. I mean, you had to be half blind because I'm sorry, that is ugly. <laughs> oh, but ugly. <laughs> As you can see, I got the sickness bad. Oh, but, incredibly bad. But I also got to get back to my dealership. Our open yeah. house is in full board. We got a couple hundred people there. I understand and, that. And, and I really appreciate you guys wanting to see well, I appreciate stuff, this, so. but I, I got. But I just I got, got, I got to get going, you know. I got, I got questions. Um, Bob? Bob? Hey, Bob. This segment is brought to you by Ultimax Belts. Over the weekend here at FNS Yamaha and Marine, I have been totally blown away by the level of enthusiasm there is for snowmobiles, especially considering that there isn't a lot of snow coverage here in the lower part of Pennsylvania in the wintertime. Here, folks have to accept the fact that they have to travel to ride. Places like New York, Maine are popular destinations along with Ontario, Quebec and New Brunswick. But despite this need to travel, the snowmobile lifestyle is as strong here as anywhere. The conversations I had with people checking out the open house ranged from places to ride and where we've ridden to talking about the awesome turnout of vintage iron to snowmobile ice oval and drag racing and each conversation felt like I was talking with old friends. It was also special to meet the legendary Tim Bender who was a big influence on Yamaha sleds back in the day and continues to be involved in snowmobile racing across brands. His presence and popularity at the open house proved once again the hero status he has in the snowmobile world. Then, getting the chance to check out Bob's ultimate collection of vintage sleds was completely unexpected. I was told it was something to see, but I wasn't prepared for what I saw. Keep tuned to STV for more on this fleet. Anyways, that wraps it for this show. We'll see you next time on Snowmobiler Television. Closed captioning is brought to you by Scott Snowmobile Goggles. STV has been brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Wherever life takes you, Best Western is there. Ultimax Belts, performance driven, performance proven. And by Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 58 years.